I remember the pale green tint of Coca-Cola bottles. I remember not really trusting mincemeat pie, what was in it, and dressing too. I remember the way cranberry sauce slides out of the can and then plops. I remember two years of cheating in Spanish class by lightly penciling in the translations of words. I remember number two pencils with pink erasers. I remember some teachers that would let you get up to use the pencil sharpener without having to ask. I remember the rotating system of seating where every Monday you moved up a seat. I remember in woodworking class making a magazine rack. I remember learning to dive in swimming class because I had to, but I never dove again. I remember wondering why your head didn't get full of water through your ears and nose. I remember stories about parents throwing their babies. Into you just heard an excerpt from a poem called I Remember by the American artist and author Joe Brainard. Joe Brainard worked across lots of different art forms, from designing theatre sets to creating comics, publishing poetry to being an acclaimed artist, especially in collage. Joe was part of an informal group called the New York School. This was a group of poets, dancers, musicians and artists who were active in New York in the 90s, 50s and 60s. Another member of this group was Kenwood Elmsley, Joe's long-term romantic partner and artistic collaborator. I remember it's probably Joe's most well-known work. It's a book-long poem that's also a memoir of his life, told in non-chronological order through striking images. The New Yorker recently reviewed some of Joe's work and said, I would make a case for I Remember as one of the 20 or so most important American autobiographies, important for its air of unimportance and for its mingling of cultural bric-a-brac with sexual frankness and self-revelation. In this poem, Joe remembers lots of very different experiences from his past, some poignant, some surreal, some matter-of-fact, and turns them into a poem. And that's what we're going to do today too. So for this, you need to be sitting somewhere comfortable, maybe somewhere quiet where you can concentrate. Because at first, all we're going to do is go back into our memories, because you need to focus on a place, a place that you know really well. Now, it has to be a memory, so it can't be the place that you're in now. But it could be, for example, your school, primary or secondary, uh, the house of a friend or family member, Anywhere that you know really well, but we're going to focus on that place now. You might even like to close your eyes as you really try and remember that place in as much detail as possible. Now, as you're reconstructing this place in your mind, in your memory, there's different things that you might like to think about. The sensory elements of that place, the things that you could see the textures you could feel, the smells, the sounds, the tastes. What things happened there? Poignant memories, positive memories, funny things that happened to you and to other people. What sticks out to you the most from the things that you did in that place? What are the features that really make it significant to you? Travel back into your memory and try and remember as many details as possible, even tiny ones. Really hold that place in your mind. Now we're gonna do some writing. Get a pen or something to type with, because I'm gonna give you some prompts so that you can jot down your notes about that place. So the prompts I'm gonna give you are gonna start with sounds you could hear in that place any sounds that were there, from people, from transport, who knows, but just jot those down. It could be a mind map, bullet points, it doesn't matter. Our next prompt is around taste. Now this could be food and drink, meals you associate with that place, but it could be the taste of other things as well. And remember, it could be things that maybe you saw other people eating or drinking in that place too, but taste you associate with it. Now relate to that is the sense of smell, fragrances, scents. What scents do you associate with that place? Are there different scents at different times? Note those down. Now we're going into things that happened in that place. 
happy memories, positive memories, things that were funny, joyous. Again, they could have happened to you or to others, but the things that happened in that place that were positive. Next, we're thinking about more poignant memories. And I don't mean that you need to think about things that are sad or upsetting, but maybe things that are just resonant somehow. Maybe they're nostalgic or a bit bittersweet, but those memories that kind of stick out, that catch. And then finally, of course, there's space for you to write anything else that you want. Images, thoughts, memories that stick out from this place that you're thinking of. So to recap, our prompts were sound, taste, smell, happy memories, poignant memories, and anything else at all that you associate with that place. Now pause the video as you note down, mind map, list as many different images and thoughts as you can. Pause the video now. Okay, so you should have noted down however you want to, things associated with that place. Now, once you've got all of your images that written down, as many as you can, I want you to pick out your favourites, the one that stick out to you. Once you've picked out your favourites, I want you to write them up separately, neatly. Now, at this point, you might like to expand them. You might like to put them in a different order, play about with different orders. You might like to tinker with them somehow to make them flow one into the other. But once you've got them in an order you're happy with, I want you, like Joe Brainard, to put the words I remember at the start of each line. Now this technique of repeating the same phrase at the start of every line in a poem is called anaphora. People use it in speeches as well. That's the technique that Joe Brainard used and it's the technique that you're using in your I remember poem. Inspired by the work of Joe Brainard, you've now created your own poem about a place that you remember. Your poem will be full of striking concrete images and you'll have used that technique of anaphora, repeating the same phrase at the start of each line, I remember. We'd love to see the poems that you've written that have been inspired by Joe Brainard. Please email them to us here at Grimm & Co or if you're in one of our established writing groups, you could upload them to your Seesaw journal. We hope that you've enjoyed this activity and have found it inspiring. As we end, let's hear just a few more words from Joe Brainard himself. I remember the indescribable smell of a certain dime store downtown with wooden floors, great banana cake, and my favorite 25 cent photo machine. My favorite because it got stuck once and continued taking pictures of me for what seemed like hours until a nearby clerk became suspicious and called the manager over to turn the thing off. I remember having your mouth washed out with soap for saying dirty words. Not from experience, though. I remember little white fingernail spots. I remember biting on a little piece of flesh inside my mouth until a very sweet sort of pain came. I remember in speech class each fall having to give a speech about what I did this summer. I remember usually saying that I swam a lot, a lie, and painted a lot, true, and did a lot of reading, not true, and that the summer went very fast, true. They always have, and they still do, or so it seems to me, once summer is over.